schedule a free design consultation, and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Uh, well, there are the eyes and ears on the ice, but seeing how fast hockey, how hockey is the fastest game on earth, referees can make mistakes. Yeah, you know, it's been a tough time, uh, especially for local guys around mm -hmm. here. We do catch up with a local referee who's seen and heard it all. Nermanisa has part two in our final look at hockey behavior at our local rinks. With less than an hour to go until puck drop, Troy Winterhalt suits up in the referee's room. It's a thankless job, one you need thick skin for. And Winterhalt has seen his fair share of bad behavior. It comes with the job, it really does, but uh, I mean, some of the stuff isn't really warranted. Like, you know, you, you really, really bothers a guy when you, you know, the fans are throwing stuff on the ice or where it gets in a, a spot where the player's safety is compromised. Winterhalt is a veteran when it comes to sporting the stripes. This is his 24th season. Last November, he reffed his 2000th game. Now, the 36 year old is well known in these parts, which makes for an easy target. Things get heated up, right? And people, people get get ramped up about the game and they do things without maybe thinking, you know, at, at the point because the adrenaline starts flowing and stuff. But, but no, I haven't had anything where it's been to the point where I feel for my safety leaving the rank or anything like that. While Troy Winterhalt may feel safe at work, that's not the case for many. Now, according to the Lloydminster Minor Hockey Association, they lose about 30% of their referees at the halfway mark. Now, some of the reasons for that is just some of them just don't want to deal with the abuse. You got to play the puck. Yeah, I got you. Anybody else? We mic'd up Winter Halt for a unique look at what a typical few shifts would look and sound like. No, uh, no, no. Up we come. Up we come. Okay. Where you go? Where you go, White? Heads up, heads up, heads up. Good work, guys. Good job. Did you guys win yesterday? Yeah. You did? Yeah, we did. Who'd you play? That's the 60. Oh, yeah. What was the score? 4-2. Uh, 4-2. You watch your changes. You watch your changes. There's some tight changes yeah, yeah, here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Man. Thank you. It's too low. Below the knees, okay? Hockey is a fast sport. Mistakes will happen, whether it's from the officials, players, or coaches. Winterhalt just wants parents to remember that and has this final piece of advice. At the end of the day, it's really about the kids and uh, about them learning the game and having some fun and getting better out there. Naramanisa, Newcap Sports. Meanwhile, the Lloydminster Bobcats return to the heist tonight, aiming for another encore performance after putting up seven goals against the Calgary Canucks. Tonight, they face the White Court Wolverines at the Civic Center. This will be the fifth meeting of the season for both clubs. The Bobcats hold the season series three games to one, the only loss coming on January 2nd to White Court. All eyes will be on the pair of Patrick Geary and Kevin Dara, who combined for eight points last weekend. Puck drop for tonight's game is at 7.30. And in Junior B action, the Lloydminster Bandits put their six-game winning streak on the line when they faced the Cold Lake Ice, who, by the way, was the last loss the Bandits had before going on that win streak. And it's crunch time for the Vermilion Tigers, just three points back of the final playoff spot. They're in tough as they face the best team in the league, the Wainwright Bisons. For basketball fans in the border city, you're in for a treat this evening. The Lakeland Rustlers women's team are tops in the province, but nipping at their heels are the Nate Ooks, who look ready to knock down their rivals from the North Division. I think the girls are pretty self-motivated for this weekend. Uh, it's a good chance for us to get in two really good games, uh, kind of heading into the home stretch to playoffs. They're the only loss that we have on us, so I think that's a lot of motivation for the girls to come out strong and make a statement. Two teams heading for a collision course this weekend. We both have gotten better um, just with gradual play, more practice, more intensity, being tougher. So yeah, for sure it's going to be a different match. The Lakeland Rustlers and Nate Ooks sit 1-2 in the north standings. Both have been on a tear after splitting the first two games back in November. The key for Chris King's squad is shutting down their most potent weapons, but to do that for two games in a row could be tricky. Um, Tori's probably the best post in the league. Uh, very big, very physical, really attacks the glass, and uh, Shaylin's uh, ultra quick, so she gets a lot of steals and scores easy, easy buckets, so we got to make sure that we know where those two are at all times. While the Ooks have plenty of firepower, so too do the wrestlers. The team has leaned on leaders like Amber Irvine, who is poised to have another solid weekend after 24 and 19 point efforts earlier in the semester. They just warm up, do the same thing. The girls get excited during warm up and just see how the game goes, just prepare before. And once, the, once you're on the court, I just play, I don't think. 
The wrestlers are pondering whether or not to use star Cameo McCurley, who's coming off an injury. Coach King would like to get her in the lineup sometime this week, but he's not placing his bets on it just yet. She'll be a game time decision. Um, she's getting really close to playing. Uh, if she does play, she'll be limited minutes. Obviously, uh, it's more important for us to have her for playoffs than a league game. With both teams who like to run the floor, there is one phase that continues to echo through the gym for every practice, game, and interview. Being consistent on both ends of the floor for all four quarters. And I feel like every time I've been interviewed this year, I say that we need to be um, consistent. So it's something that we're working on, and um, I think it's something that um, we are going to do a really good job of executing. Well, meanwhile, the Lakeland Rustlers volleyball teams will meet Edmonton this evening to face the same Ooks team. They will return home Saturday night at Lakeland Gym. Now, an Ottawa teenager is getting a lot of attention in the world of U.S. high school football thanks to a full scholarship and a lot of hard work. 15-year-old Tyler Raymond is a starting quarterback at a prestigious prep school in Maryland, and he's playing against kids who are four years older. Not only that, he's breaking their records too.